I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills, <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. Welcome to the Monday, November the 6th edition of Just the Truth. I'm Joey Hudson. Glad to have you in on this Monday. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Your comments are always welcome on the Truth text line. That's 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. A busy, busy weekend. Uh, glad to have you joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. For, to lose the weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. Uh Bit of a different look as I am in my beautiful Lake Kiowee studios. Glad to have you join me here as well. For those of you who are watching on YouTube or Facebook or wherever, uh, again, you'll notice that it's a little bit of a different look, but uh, this is where I'll be from time to time and hope you'll plan to uh, join me. I'm just blessed to be able to share the beauty of Lake Kiowee in Oconee County south carolina here's what was in the news over the weekend and it was a busy weekend ukrainian president Zelensky saying in an interview that aired yesterday uh, that what keeps him fighting is ensuring that russian president putin does not take away the freedoms of ukrainians also Zelensky invited former president donald trump to his country's war zone saying that former president trump quote cannot imagine this war cannot manage this war. He was responding to President Trump's claim that he could end the war with Russia in a mere 24 hours if elected president uh, in the 2024 elections. Senator Lindsey Graham uh, on CNN with Dana Bass said that he and Senator Richard Blumenthal are introducing a resolution that puts Iran on notice that it will face consequences if it tries to expand the Israel-Hamas conflict. Uh, speaking of Donald Trump, he's gaining considerable leads uh, against President Biden in five of six key battleground states in a new poll. Uh, the New York Times Siena College poll was released over the weekend. I'll give you those details a little later in today's show. And tomorrow is election day in a lot of municipalities around the country with some referendums on the ballot, too. Uh, Spartanburg County voters will decide the fate of a proposed penny sales tax for roads. I'll give you the details on that and get your input. Uh, what do you think about this additional one cent sales tax? It seems like they're asking for this everywhere, that a, an additional penny is going to solve all, solve all of our problems. Your comments are worth or uh, are welcome on the truth text line, 864-477-5639. If you, uh, have a an opinion on this Spartanburg County additional penny sales tax. Uh, let's start with former acting DHS Secretary Chad Wolf, who told Fox News yesterday that the Hezbollah uh, terrorist group has had a presence in the U.S. for some time now. Well, absolutely. I think we've got a couple of things going on. I think we uh, I agree with Director Ray. We need to be concerned about those that are here in the United States and that are inspired or could be inspired by activities overseas and, and what they see here on college campuses and the like. So I think that's that's issue number one. Issue number two is we know that uh, Lebanese Hezbollah has been in the United States for some time. We have a threat assessment from the Department of Homeland Security going back to 2020 that says that they could engage in operations with little uh, to, with little notice. Mm. And then on top of that, obviously, is the situation along that border. And whether you have known or suspected terrorists or you have special interest aliens coming from countries of concern like Iran, like Syria, like Lebanon, all of this leads us to a situation where we're here in the homeland. We are vulnerable, particularly as that southern border continues to be wide open. I was just down there for the past several days and it's getting worse by the day. Border Patrol is very frustrated. Um, and that they're not on the line trying to apprehend very bad individuals. They're simply in their centers processing more and more migrants. Again, former acting DHS Secretary Chad Wolf on Fox News yesterday as he uh, warned that, uh, and, and this is something we've all speculated, right? With, with what, two and a half million people coming across our southern border, 
uh, since Joe B Biden was uh, inaugurated, who knows who's coming in, uh, coming into our country. Um, Ukrainian President uh, Zelensky, uh, in an interview that aired yesterday, said that what keeps him fighting is ensuring that Russian President Putin does not take away his freedoms. And that's why quite often we all fight, right? All countries. We're, we're fighting for our freedom every single day. Uh, he said in uh, this NBC Meet the Press interview, uh, quote, and this is through a translator, of course, I have a lot of power, back even feeling strong, and I have a lot of energy. It doesn't mean that we want to fight all of our lives because the price is high, he said. Uh, because the war takes the best of us, the best heroes, the best men, the best women and children. That's it. But we're not ready to give our freedom to this effing terrorist, Putin. That's it. That's why we are fighting. That's it, he continued. Uh, speaking through a, a translator, he went on to say, unfortunately, this thing hasn't changed since the beginning of the full-scale invasion. We've seen Russia's domination in the air. It's a fact. And without the air defense, our steps forward are slow. Zelensky's interview comes as lawmakers are divided on whether to approve more aid to this uh, this war-torn country. As senators are discussing a bill that would include aid for both Ukraine and Israel, of course, the U.S. House of Representatives passing a bill that uh, wanted that separated the funding for the two countries. Uh, he did not answer what Ukraine's deadline was for Congress to approve more aid to Ukraine. He said, it's not the question for us. For us, that is real life. So, you know, we wanted to get your support, like we say yesterday. That's why it doesn't matter. It will be today or tomorrow. We just, I think, lose time, lose time. Time is very expensive to us. That's why we need your support. But you will get more. You will get more, I'm sure, after I win. You'll see all these things. Well, of course, he's not going to put a deadline because he's going to accept it whenever the United States offers it. Uh, no sooner, no later. Also in, in the uh, interview, President Zelensky invited former President Trump to his country's war zone, saying that former President Trump, quote, can't manage this war. Now, he's responding to President Trump's claim that if a, a reelected president next year, that he can end the war with Russia within 24 hours of taking office. Um, President Trump said that in about 24 hours, he can manage it and finish the war, Zelensky said. For me, what can I say? So he's very welcome as well. President Biden was here, and I think he understood some details, which you can understand only being here. So I invite President Trump, if he can come here, I will need 24 minutes, he said. Uh, back in March, in the spring, President Trump said that he could solve the war in Ukraine in one day if he were reelected noting that the recognition or, or the negotiation process would be very easy. Uh, the Ukrainian president said he would need just 24 minutes instead of the 24 hours to explain to Trump that he can't end the war as easily as he thinks he could. Zelensky added that peace can't be negotiated with Russian President Putin, even if Trump were to try. He can't bring peace because of Putin, he said. If he's not trying and he's not ready to give our territory to this terrible man, to Putin, if you're not ready to give it, if you're not ready to give our independence, he can't manage it, he said. Uh, Kristen Welker, the, uh, the moderator or, or host of the show, asked Zelensky if he thinks Trump would support Ukraine in its war if he were to win in 2024. Zelensky uh, said, Really, I don't know. I hope that it depends not only on the present institutionally. I think it depends on the opinions of Americans, of your society. I think that is most important. Senator Lindsey Graham yesterday saying that he expects the Senate to pass a bill that includes aid for both Israel and Ukraine, despite the House passing an aid package only for Israel that includes offsets Democrats in the White House oppose. When asked if a bill uh, with, with funding for both Israel and Ukraine will pass the Senate, Senator Graham said that he expects it will just days after the, the GOP House passed their $14.3 billion in aid to Israel. Graham told CNN State of the Union, quote, I'm for Ukraine support. We can't pull the plug on Ukraine. Let Putin get away with this. There goes Taiwan if you do that. I'm definitely for Israel. So I think you'll see a package of border security 
funding for Ukraine, funding for Israel coming out of the Senate, probably as one package, I would support that, he said. Uh, again, House Republicans uh, tied the Israel aid package to cuts to the IRS. They're trying to reclaim some of the 80, uh, 80, 80,000 additional IRS agents that would be hired under the uh, Biden plan. Um, it was part of the Inflation Reduction Act. The Majority Leader Chuck Schumer announced last week that his chamber would not take up the deeply flawed proposal coming from the House. Instead, he vowed to work with senators in both parties on a package that includes funding for Israel, Ukraine, competition with the Chinese government, and humanitarian aid for Gaza. Many Republicans also want to see funding for border security beefed up. Uh, the White House also slammed the, White, uh, the, the House GOP proposal, saying that it was politicizing our national security interest. As you know, Senator Graham has been a vocal supporter of supporting both Israel and Ukraine. Uh, he said last week that there was no limit of Palestinian deaths that would make him question support for Israel. Senator Graham also had a warning to Iran yesterday, adding that he wants to put Iran on notice that it will face consequences if it tries to expand the Israel Hamas conflict. You both are uh, introducing a bipartisan sense of the Senate resolution tomorrow about Iran. Senator Graham, what will it say? Well, it basically says if the war expands, if Hezbollah opens up a second front in the north against Israel in a substantial way to overwhelm Iron Dome, uh, then we should hit the Islamic Republic of Iran. There is no Hamas without the Ayatollah support. There is no Hezbollah without the without the Ayatollah's support. The great Satan in the regions, <clears throat> not Israel the, or the United States, is Iran. So Senator Blumenthal and I just got back. Uh, Israel is begging us to deter Iran. They don't want the war to, ride, uh, to widen. If any of our troops are killed in Syria and Iraq by Iranian-backed militias, I think that's an expansion of the war. So the resolution puts Iran on notice that all this military force in the region will be coming after you if you expand this war by activating Hezbollah or killing an American through your proxies in Syria and Iraq. And they need to hear that. They need to believe that. Senator Lindsey Graham again uh, yesterday on uh, on CNN. Uh, Donald Trump is gaining considerable leads against Joe Biden in some key uh, battleground states, six battleground states to be exact, in a new poll. Details on that in, in just a moment. But first, let me talk with you about discounted appliance warehouse. Are you tired of buying appliances from inexperienced sales staff that have absolutely no appliance knowledge? Uh, with so many different options, brands, features, it's tough to figure out which one's right for you, isn't it? If you go to one of the big box stores, they just direct you to aisle 39 where you see a, a long line of refrigerators, for example, with a lot of different features, a lot of different price points. You need someone who will help you, who will walk with you through every step of the way, and that's Discounted Appliance Warehouse. With an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating and nearly perfect reviews on Google, the team at Discounted Appliance Warehouse has the knowledge that you need to have confidence in your purchase. Uh, they'll also show you around the warehouse and um, show you the, the over 1,500 appliances that they have in stock, which means quite often you can buy it today and it will be delivered today for your use. Discounted Appliance Warehouse. They have award-winning service department, extended warranties, and they have you covered well beyond the sale. And Discounted Appliance Warehouse is proud to offer Speed Queen, the only washers and dryers with up to a seven-year warranty on parts and labor. Be sure and check out their new Overstock Appliance Center. It's in the market at the mill in downtown Pickens uh, for some great clearance pricing as well. Discounted Appliance Warehouse. It's worth the short drive to Pickens and online at DAWPickens.com. DAWPickens.com. So Donald Trump is gaining considerable leads against President Joe Biden in five of six key battleground states. This new poll shows the GOP frontrunners up uh, four to ten percentage points among registered voters in Arizona, uh, Georgia, just down the road from, from uh, us here in upstate South Carolina, Michigan, Nevada, and Pennsylvania, this according to a New York Times Siena College poll. Trump lost all of these states to Biden in the 2020 elections, according to the uh, official 
uh, results. Taken together, those five states account for 69 electoral college votes. For context, Trump lost the electoral college to Biden 232 to 306. As you know, a candidate must get 270 votes to win the presidency. The only state among the six where Trump trails Biden is in Wisconsin, where the incumbent president has a two percentage point edge, according to the poll. Uh, Donald Trump, 77 years old, is uh, also generally besting Biden in national polls with a uh, 0.5 percentage point edge in the latest Real Clear Politics aggregate poll. Uh, no Republican has won the popular vote for president since 2004. We've got to keep that in mind. So some analysts have questioned those findings. Uh, the New York Times-Siena College polls results in battleground states echoes similar findings to a myriad of other polling that shows Trump with a lead over Biden in some of these key swing states. In Nevada, for example, Trump beats Biden 52 percent to 41 percent, while the uh, Real Clear Politics gr aggregate has Trump ahead 46.7 to 44.3. Uh, down in Georgia, President Trump is up 49 percent to 43 percent, again with the R Real Clear Politics aggregate has it at 48.5 to 43 percent. In Arizona, Trump is ahead 49 to 44. Uh, Real Clear Politics, 47 to 43, so somewhat uh, similar results. In Michigan, according to the New York Times, Siena, Trump is up by 49% to 43%. And in Pennsylvania, the key state of Pennsylvania, uh, Trump leads 48 to 44, while the Real Clear Politics aggregate has him up 45.5 to 43.5. Meanwhile, Trump is trailing Biden in Wisconsin, uh, that one shakes out with uh, Biden leading 47 percent to 45, just a, a two-point uh, margin there, according to the New York Times Siena College poll. In the Real Clear Politics aggregate, uh, Trump uh, ba barely beats Biden with a 44.3 to 43.7. Both men are well-positioned, of course, to uh, at, at the moment, uh, to get their respective parties' nomination. Uh, Biden, 80 years old, of course, will celebrate his birthday later this month on November the 20th. He's already the oldest president in U.S. history and would be 86 at the conclusion of a hypothetical second term. Think about that, an 86-year-old president. Uh, is that too old, do you think? Can anyone... 86 years old, manage our, our country, be, be the, the leader of the free world. Your comments are welcome on the Truth Text Line. Text those to 864-477-5633, 477-JOEY. Uh, a, a huge 71% of voters felt that Biden is too old to be president, including 54% of his own backers while only 39% felt the same way about Donald Trump, including 19% of those who identify as, as supporters of Donald Trump. It's because the two men are so different. Joe Biden looks old. Joe Biden acts old. Donald Trump doesn't. Donald Trump doesn't look to be uh, 77 years old. He doesn't act like an older man. He has full of energy. He plays golf. He's, he's always doing things. He can keep a, um, a, a, uh, a, a schedule like no one. I mean, flying, making multiple stops per day. Uh, his campaign has recently begun trying to undercut concerns about his age, uh, spotlighting Trump's uh, various flubs and mishaps, according to the Biden administration. Now, this has... You know, we, we're not seeing Trump fall up the stairs to his to his airplane like we see with Joe Biden at times. Uh, former Democrat National Committee Chairman Ed Rendell said there is nervousness among the donors and some of the elected officials that Joe Biden won't be a strong candidate because of doubts Americans have about his health. And those doubts have been expressed in polls. Um, Rendell, uh, uh, by the way, he Rendell told this to uh, uh, John Castamatidis on uh, WABC 770 in New York City. Uh, Rendell was optimistic, though, about Biden's prospects over Trump. If you ask him, if it's Joe Biden running against Donald Trump, who would you vote for? They're almost unanimous that they'd vote for Joe Biden, he said on the Cats Roundtable. Obviously, 
he has not seen the results of the latest New York Times Siena poll. Uh, other political pundits uh, commenting on the poll saying that it was time for Biden to make way for a new, de- new uh, party leader. Bill Kristol, a commentator and frequent Trump critic, wrote on X, It's time. President Biden has served our country well. I'm confident he'll do so for the next year, but it's time for an act of personal sacrifice and public spirit. It's time to pass the torch to the next generation. It's time for Biden to announce he won't run in 2024. Uh, Obama administration alum Dan Pfeiffer said, The new New York Times poll is bad. There is no sugarcoating it. But instead of panicking or naively uh, unskewing the poll, we should start doing the work of rebuilding the anti-MAGA majority, noting that the voters' opinion of Biden jumps when they hear about his accomplishments. I'm not quite sure which accomplishments he's referring to uh, there. Uh, the reduction, Inflation Reduction Act that did nothing for, redu- uh, for reducing inflation. Uh, last month, Joe Biden got a new Democrat primary challenger, uh, if you'll remember, Representative Dean Phillips, a Democrat from Minnesota. Uh, people uh, are pretty much just dismissing his candidacy. He uh, filed to be on the New Hampshire ballot when Joe Biden decided to forego New Hampshire uh, when it violated the Democrat Party's rules of uh, having South Carolina being the, the first primary in the Democrat presidential nominating process. Phillips is, uh, again, considered a long-shot contender. He wrote on X, I could offer no statement more powerful than the one made by suffering Americans in today's New York Times poll. That's why Trump beats Biden 48 to 44 in the battleground states, while a generic Democrat beats Trump 48 to 40, he wrote. Trump also has an edge on the economy with voters trusting him more than Joe Biden by a margin of 59% to 37%, according to the poll. Biden has worked to brandish his image on the economy, or tried to, including uh, boasting about the 4.9% third quarter growth figure and takes every opportunity uh, he can to talk about the successes of Bidenomics. Again, I'm not quite sure what those successes are, but Joe Biden seems to be uh, pretty proud of it. There's still, of course, a year, a year this this uh, uh, pretty much to the day uh, before the election takes place. The Trump campaign said in a memo over the weekend reflecting on the one-year mark from the 2024 election, state by state, we are building an unparalleled machine that will bolster President Trump in key battleground states and position him to crush Biden. We embrace this exercise and will make the most of it. This week, voters in places like Kentucky and Virginia will head to the ballots for their off-year elections, which could serve as uh, another uh, bellwether uh, for where voters are actually, uh, what they're actually thinking when they uh, cast their votes. Republican presidential contenders will also square off, of course, uh, this week, Wednesday, in Miami for the third primary debate of the cycle. Uh, President Trump, uh, again, not going to participate. Uh, He has not participated in any of the debates so far. The um, margin of error for this latest poll is between 4.4 to 4.8 percentage points. Uh, Republican National Committee has set a date for its fourth GOP uh, presidential debate. Slating the event for December the 6th, it will be held in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. The RNC has raised its qualification criteria for candidates hoping to get on the debate stage after each of its events so far, and we'll have even tougher thresholds for candidates eyeing the Alabama stage. Uh, An RNC spokesperson confirmed the December date in Tuscaloosa. Presidential hopefuls will need a polling, uh, need to be polling at 6% or higher in two national polls, or at 6% in one early state poll and uh, from two separate carve-out states listed as Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and, of course, South Carolina, who will be first in the South. Uh, They're going to have to do that in order to get behind the podium again in December. Uh, That's higher than the 4% that is set for this week's debate in Miami on Wednesday. The polls also need to survey at least 8,000 registered likely Republican voters, among other requirements. And while the the Miami debate required at least 70,000 unique donors this week, candidates 
in next month's debate will need to bring in a minimum of 80,000 unique donors uh, to their campaigns, of course, with at least 200 unique donors in 20 or more states or territories each. The Republican presidential contenders will have until 48 hours prior to the scheduled debate uh, to be able to prove to the RNC that they meet these requirements. Uh, the move to schedule a fourth debate in December comes after questions whether candidates would have another opportunity to reach potential voters before the Iowa caucuses uh, in January, which uh, kicks off the GOP presidential nomination cycle. Former President Trump, the front runner uh, in, in the party, has skipped all the debates so far. Uh, nothing to indicate that he will not do the same thing in December. Trump's former vice president, of course, Mike Pence, dropped out of the race last weekend after uh, participating in the first two debates, as many hope the field will start to narrow and support will consolidate behind uh, one of the other candidates. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy, Senator Tim Scott, and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie appear to have met the criteria for the third debate again that's on Wednesday of this week in Miami. I'm headed to Florida later today. I'll be in Miami with Mike Gallagher, where he'll be broadcasting from the GOP debate. Uh, if you, do you plan to watch it? Are you going to watch this week's debate? Love to hear from you on the Truth text line, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. You can leave me a, a, a quick uh, comment. You can leave me a short voice message. And, of course, your emails are always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. Uh, appreciate you, those of you who are joining me in, on this uh, new journey. It's going to be fun. We're going to uh, drill down on the issues. I appreciate you listening to Just the Truth podcast. We're going to cut through the noise, uh, get through the madness and the craziness in this world. Be sure and let all your friends uh, know about it. Uh, go to my website, joeyhudson.com. Check in frequently as we uh, update that and uh, look forward to having you. From the Truth text line, Dom in Illinois says, uh, Happy Friday, Joey. Loving the podcast, but loved you on the radio more. Uh, thank you, Dom. Uh, I understand that change has to happen, though. And as for the government, once again, sticking their long Pinocchio nose into our business and trying to regulate everything, from what we drive, our refrigerators, toilets, ranges, etc., to now what we eat and or drink. Uh, I think Dom is referencing some of the uh, some of the things that that we talked about last week uh, with the uh, Biden administration trying to limit some of the uh, the types of uh, of food and drink that you and I will have access to. Uh, Dom continues: We the people should be left alone or live our lives without government intervention. One other thing: the Democrats trying to eliminate hate. Seriously, Dems are nothing but hate. Thanks, Joey. Be well. He's referencing in that final thing where Vice President Kamala Harris was tasked with eliminating hate in the Biden administration's latest effort. On the text line from Grandma Barb, she says, Listen to your show this morning with my coffee, smiley face. Uh, good hearing your voice. You asked what question would I ask at the debate? It is this. Didn't your mother ever wash your mouth out with soap? for using unclean language. I can't believe two grown men who want to be the leader of our country are talking vulgar backroom bar talk in public, especially Ron DeSantis. He has those beautiful young children. Is that how he wants them to talk? No wonder this country has fallen so badly, people choosing to live in the gutter. Grandma Barb, uh, appreciate your comments. She's referencing the, uh, the little back and forth that uh, Ron DeSantis and, and Donald Trump had last week when Ron DeSantis was passing out golf balls, a, a sleeve of two golf balls, saying that Donald Trump had none since he was skipping out on this week's debate. Just, just a gimmick, but uh, I agree with you, Grandma Barb. Uh, you, could, uh, you, can, uh, you can say things without having to be vulgar about it. Andy writes on the Truth text line, Way to go, man. You have Ph.D. in discounted appliance warehouse. Hope you're knocking on Big Rock and Furman Ford, <laughs> keeping us listeners uh, for years to come. Thank you, Joey. Of course, he's referencing our our, our uh, sponsors and appreciate that. Uh, yes, we are 
hoping that uh, Furman Ford will join us as well. Jeff writes on the Truth Text Line. Good morning, Joey. I'm really enjoying the podcast. It's a little bit different than the radio, but this old dog got it figured out. Thanks for all you do. Go Trump Train 2024. Keep the comments coming on the Truth Text Line, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Leave a quick voice message. You can send me a comment, and you can email me, joey at Hudson. Dot com. Let me take a minute to tell you, speaking of Ph.D. weight loss and nutrition, almost three years ago, I met Dr. Ashley Lucas. I was able to lose 30 pounds in just a, a short period of time. What I loved about Ph.D. weight loss and nutrition is during the weight loss phase, they provided uh, 80% of my food. They offered uh, coaching and encouragement uh, because this program is about changing your habits. It's not a fad diet. Uh, it's not one of those diets where you, you can lose the weight and in six months or a year you gain it back because you don't have any support. It's based on the science of nutrition, what to eat, when to eat, how to eat, and those things are all important. Dr. Ashley Lucas and her team at Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition, they'll teach you all about your body's needs uh, and, and nu- nutrition. Uh, if you want to lose the weight for the last time, then let me encourage you to make that call. 864-252-4925. 864-252-4925. You can also find them online at myphdweightloss.com. PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. Uh, tomorrow is Election Day in a lot of municipalities with some referendums uh, on the ballots also. Spartanburg County voters will decide the fate of a proposed penny sales tax for roads. Now, how many times have we heard this story? How many counties, including Greenville, has raised the sales tax saying, okay, this is going to solve all of our road problems. Give us another penny sales tax. We'll take care of your roads. Uh, This is, uh, of course, an off-year election Several important local races will be decided, school board seats in some areas, uh, city councils, county councils, big race for mayor in Greenville, uh, and uh, there there are no statewide races or national races, all local, but uh, just as important. This uh, controversial question on the ballot in Spartanburg will decide whether to approve a six-year penny sales tax to raise $478 million to repair roads. Tomorrow, polls will open at 7 a.m. We'll close at 7 p.m. You need to uh, uh, just go to your normal polling place. If you're not sure where that is, go to scvotes.gov, scvotes.gov, to verify the address of your current polling place. Uh, Voters can also get sample ballots at scvotes.gov as well. One Spartanburg, Inc., uh, they're the group who led the drive in 2017 For the current tax that voters approved by a margin of 62% to 38%, they have endorsed this additional penny sales tax, again, for roads, and and they publicize a website called Vote Yes Spartanburg. Uh, Alan Smith, president and CEO of One Spartanburg, said, a recently released Clemson University study estimates $162 million to $186 million of the revenue will come from visitors. A property tax increase to fund these projects will bring in zero revenue from visitors, which is one of the many reasons why we encourage people to continue the 1% sales tax and vote yes on November the 7th. That's sort of always the argument, isn't it, with a sales tax, that um, more of that will come from people passing through than actually a burden on local residents. Besides the support, uh, some Spartanburg County Republicans are taking a stand against the new new taxes and opposing it at a Spartanburg County GOP executive committee meeting that was back on uh, September 21st. Nearly a third of the representatives from the county's 112 precincts voted to oppose the referendum, according to County GOP Chairman Curtis Smith. What they want was no more taxes that the government has too much of our money, Smith said, uh, as the uh, referendum meets opposition there. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thank you again for joining me as we uh, dive into the issues that that affect us here locally and across the nation. 
Appreciate you joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose the weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. Uh, thanks for spending a few minutes uh, of your time with me. Hey, coming up on tomorrow's show, Bill O'Reilly joins me. He has another one, one of his bestseller killing series. This time, Bill tells his stories of the, uh, the Salem Witch Hunt. It's another one of his books that once you start reading it, you simply can't put it down. Uh, plan to join me tomorrow. I had a chance to spend some time with Bill O'Reilly recently to talk about his book, and we talked about politics as well. I look forward to sharing that with you in tomorrow's edition of Just the Truth. Keep your comments coming on the Truth text line, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Keep your email, emails coming as well, uh, joey at joeyhudson.com. Uh, and until next time, just remember, folks, God's got this. He's still in control.